Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates for January 22nd, 2022. Welcome back to Simple Cyber Defense. In this episode, we're going to be talking about browser cookies, where they came from, what they what they do, what they can do, and how they can be leveraged to attack you. So, I'm Carl. Hi, this is Ahmad. And so, let's begin with the world of browser cookies. So, uh, do you want to start? or? Yeah, so, um, cookies. We all love them, but we don't know what they are when it comes to what they are online. So cookies simply stated, they're just small text files okay? and they're placed on your computer, in your browser or your, your phone. Um, and they're commonly used to uh, collect data. Okay. Now they can be, that data can be used for different things. Um, <clears throat> the, 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 the cookie can gather information about uh, the use of the website, how it's used the functionality of the website. Um, they also, uh, you know, there's different types of them, right? Um, and th the question is, are they, are they good or are they bad, right? And generally, they're, they're used to make your experience when you use the websites faster and more convenient and personalized to you, right? Uh, for example, you, you go to Google and you search something and it asks you what language do you want to use for your search? And then you, it doesn't ask you that every time. How does it do that? It's because there's a cookie that has been put in your browser um, specifying the language that you search with, right? Um, so it, that's, that's in very simple terms. Now, as things evolve in, in, in the computer world, so have cookies, right? And now we have multiple types of cookies. Um, and you know it's something like uh, there, there's session cookies, there's permanent cookies, there's first party, third party cookies, there's flash cookies, there is even zombie cookies, right? Uh, so all these, cookies. huh? Even super cookies. Yeah, yeah, right. Even super cookies. So those are that's that's generally what what, what a cookie what cookies are. Uh, so Carl, you want to talk to us a little bit about the, the different types of cookies and how they're used? Okay, so. You're saying you have like a normal cookie that push basically puts in your session, that like logs in, and so it knows, okay, this is the identifier user for this website. Um, uh, I don't know if you know this, but the cookies were actually created in 1994 by Netscape to keep people's online shopping carts on the local computer so that the web host wouldn't have to store all that data on their on their servers so it was a way to save uh, hosting fees so that they wouldn't have to have such large amount of data for every single person's shopping cart on the server so so then they so as the internet evolved with logins and all that, that's where we get the cookies to uh, basically be like a fingerprint of who you are. So they could say, okay, when you visit this website, you are, say, Joe Blow. So you're already logged in. You don't have to log in again and again and again. Because you imagine how time-consuming it would be if you have to go to every single website every time and then log in over and over again, even if you... Like, say, you were on Facebook.com, and then you switched from Facebook.com to Google.com. You have to log into Google, and then when you're going back to Facebook.com, you have to log in again, because it wouldn't remember who you were without the cookies. So, that's where the cookies come into play. It's where it, just like the normal cookie, okay, okay, you are who you are, so even if you leave the website and come back, we still know that you are who you are. Now... The next cookie you were talking about was the uh, zombie. Mm -hmm. uh, first party cookies. First party cookies. Okay, so the first party cookies is basically like Facebook.com. 
it has their website and they create a cookie for you and it has the website facebook.com that's a first party cookie so where the th next part would be the third party cookie would be like if you go from facebook.com to someone's blog post and they have like a little like button from Facebook on their website well the only way that 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 little button would be able to be functioned is if they use what's called a third party cookie where that blog's website would have a cookie but instead of being it from the blog post it would be from facebook.com so that they would have all your information in that cookie so that that blog site could use that cookie to be able to link their blog to your Facebook account and this is where many problems the tracking come into play because now Facebook has a cookie in someone else's website and then they now they know that you visited that website so imagine all the other places out there that have like these Facebook features either log in using your Facebook account or you know hitting the like on Facebook on another website the way they could do this is through third-party cookies and with these third-party cookies not only do the website that you visit know who you are but also Facebook knows every single website that you go to and that that's a big privacy issue because now Facebook knows okay Carl went to this website A, B, C, and D just because he's logged into Facebook and now those third-party cookies are out there telling Facebook, hey, Carl's at website A, he needs some information, and off it goes. And so third-party cookies is very, very problematic in tracking. <laughs> um, so the next cookie you're wanting to talk about? Uh, zombie cookies. Zombie cookies. Ooh. <laughs> Those are kind of interesting cookies because I think based upon what the name implies, it's just dormant, dormanted until it's until it's uh, viewed. So just what, one is, what a zombie yeah. cookie is, it's, it's a flash cookie. It's a type yeah. of a flash cookie, right? But it recreates itself after it's deleted. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, That's it, the name, zombie. It, yeah, it's it's usually it's very difficult to manage or detect. Um, they're used mainly in, in things like uh, online games, mm -hmm. uh, so that you know you go to like a website like Miniclip or something, um, and it's kind of like it, it saves progress and it also um, kind of like prevents you from cheating okay. uh, as a player. I, I mean, if if you're pretty tech savvy, it's 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 easy to overcome. Overcome, yeah. Um, and, and this type of cookie is mainly used to install uh, like malware on, mm -hmm. on the device. Okay. And then the next one would be the super cookie. Now this, the only reason for this cookie to ever exist is basically for tracking purposes. Uh, the biggest names that were got caught with zombie cookies were Verizon, where they would install these super cookies into their customers' devices and basically track them everywhere on the internet. The special part of this cookie is you basically can't delete it. It's always there. And it just tracks everything that you go to and just gives it back to the, whoever created the cookie for you. Most of the times it's just... Uh, companies that just want to track you around the internet but sometimes it could be used for malicious purposes if an attacker really knows how to craft one and put it on your device and use it to basically track everywhere you go to so they can have a better idea of how to target their attacks to you because they're not going to basically send you a phishing link to a website you know you never visit so it's basically a way for them to collect information on you and say okay this person never uses facebook so we're not going to use our facebook scams but he goes to ups a lot so maybe we can get him with a tracking 
uh, fishing attempt. So, um, for, for you had, for this reason, you know, there are many laws and regulations, right? If you look at, uh, uh, like, uh, here in California or in Europe, you got a GDPR, for example. Yep. Um, any 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 laws that that have to do with uh, with privacy, there are you know the the touch on cookies, for example. There's a basic rule that says, and you'll see it when you go to any website. Uh, I'll, uh, you tell people that you're using cookies and what the cookies are being used for. Uh, you explain what the cookies are doing and why they're doing it. And uh, you also get the user's consent to store the cookies on your on their device. Yep. Um, now that it doesn't say anything about storing cookies on the servers, right? Nope. Because the server belongs to the the, the data collector, right? Mm -hmm. the data belongs to you, but the data but belong, but uh, you know what it goes on their server is they own it. Um, and pretty much what what consent it has to be given freely, right? Uh, uh, specific, you know, on what you can use my information for, and informed. And this puts the burden of teaching you about what your data is being used for on the website builder, right? Uh, it can't be ambiguous. Uh, it can be like. Uh, uh, like, oh, here, just click on this. No, or check this box. No, you have to actually fully read and understand to, to give your consent. Um, and it, it's kind of like, it, it has to be, like I said, it has to be a clear and positive action, right? Um, now, this, with that all said, um, can, can we erase cookies or can we block them completely? Well, yes, we can. The thing is, there's, as far as deleting them, um, it, it, you know, you can usually, if you have a little bit of PC knowledge, you'll go and you, you'll delete all cookies from your, your browser, um, where most of them will go away. But um, another way is you need to find the folder, you know, where actually those cookies are and make sure, you know, there, none of them is hidden and you can delete what's in that folder. Um, or you can completely block any cookies from your on your browser from 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 any website mm -hmm. to be able to add that information onto your onto your device. Um, now, there are softwares out there that you can use to block the cookies, but we won't recommend any of these because we don't want to hinder the functionality of your website, you know, of your, yeah. of your web experience. But Make it a habit to, you know, every week or so, clear your cookies out of, you know, your browser completely, and, you know, start over again, start fresh. Um, Coral will demonstrate this really cool um, browser extension. We'll, it will show you just by visiting one website. We'll start with it with a clean browser, no cookies and in, no cookies installed. We'll visit just a simple website with not many functionality. Uh, uh, functionalities, and we will um, see how many cookies are immediately put on your system. Um, and then we will see how you can, you know, find any practical use for that uh, uh, extension, which is, uh, did, you, did you find cookie editor? Carl? Yeah, I got it. I got it on. Okay. So I'm ready to go. Okay. All right. So we're going to switch over to my PC right now. So here we are on my computer with a clean web browser with no cookies, no web history, no nothing on there. All right, so where are we going to go to? Yep. Okay, so we're going to refresh the page. Still doesn't have any cookies in them. No, because this isn't a web page. This is just the the uh, home screen, basically, when you open up the browser. Yeah. There we go. Just go to news. And here we go.
Let's delete all or in individual. Bye bye, cookies. <laughs> Here's Facebook. <laughs> yeah. And you already have one, two, three, four different cookies here waiting for you. Um, I mean, if you're really uh, concerned about uh, cookies tracking you and, not, and you don't want to go through the hassle of uh, the cookie editor, uh, you could also create or download a, download a, a Firefox browser and in the settings it gives you the option to clear every cookie every time you close the browser right so you'd have that browser you would use that just for like random searches for what you want to look for and then as soon as you close that browser down all those cookies are deleted so that when you go back to your main browser to do your everyday web history stuff it doesn't get cross contaminated with each other because those cookies in that Firefox were blown out as soon as you close out that uh, browser. Um, also, if you're really concerned about ch online tracking, we did an interview with uh, Avoid the Hack, and we're going to link that interview in the description. So, if you're really concerned about those things, you can listen to that and get some good. Uh, information from that interview. Um, other than that, I think that's all that comes down to browser cookies. Just there, uh, there is one thing I forgot to mention, which okay. is uh, uh, session cookies with like yeah. important websites. Uh, okay. So, for example, you log into your bank account or your email or whatever, and mm -hmm. after you're done doing your business, most of us are just close the browser without logging out. Well, yep. what happens here is when you log in, the web server on your bank side sends a cookie, a session cookie to your computer, even though it's timed. Most of the time, it you know has a time limit. Mm -hmm. But when you just close the browser, the server on the other end doesn't know that you closed that session. So it, it would allow if there is some type of a man in the middle attack or or someone can, you know, uh, uh, steal that cookie and does what's called a, a cookie poisoning you can always take that yep. cookie and create another session right because you haven't closed that session but if you're to well, close it log out you close that session that cookie expires right it yeah. can, even if it's manipulated it doesn't you know it won't be helpful actually, so that's, that's yeah. actually yeah. it's not called uh, session poison it's called session hijacking so they session, would just yeah. yeah they would hijack your session uh, the best way to avoid that is to use uh, VPN so that the man in the middle can't be very effective because they won't be able to crack into that VPN connection between you and the bank. Yeah. Yeah, so. All right. So I think this is a good discussion about cookies, and and hopefully everyone has learned a lot. And so with that said, we're going to end this episode, and we – Hope that you liked it and enjoyed it. If you have, give it a sub subscribe, share to others that you think would be helpful knowing about these things, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates. Join us next time when we dive into more security issues, and make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. 
Plus, if you have a topic suggestion or want to support the podcast, stop by our website at simplecyberdefense.com.